This week's video is another gig diary. These are the videos where I try and give you a flavour, probably not spelt F-L-A-V-A, of what it's like to be a professional musician working in the UK. I'll show you some footage of some of my gigs with some little related stories and the odd bit of gear nerdery thrown in. So coming up in this video, there's me getting a microphone in the face just after this. My new road crew. My microphone stand getting knocked over. I get the best sound I've ever got out of my quad cortex. The look of relief on my face when the singer finally arrives. And a clip of me still playing the same old song nearly 20 years ago. So since my last gig diaries, I did a couple of videos from a music shop, Bonners in Eastbourne, so check them out on my channel. But I've got 10 gigs to cover. On top of that, I've got a new song coming out today called With Them Without You. It's an original song that I've written. I'm gonna show you a little clip of the video just to give you a taster, and I'm gonna put in the description where you can go and have a listen to it on Spotify or the platform of your choice. So please check it out. Um, a warning in the video, I am wearing a cowboy hat. I look slightly less of an idiot than I thought I was going to look when I was filming it, but you can judge that one for yourself. Also, the video stars a little cameo from my wife, so check that out here. Like the winter sun, how the summer rain, I never know. I'll be back again, like a shooting star. So on to the gigs. Now the first gig was with Suspiciously Elvis, an Elvis tribute I've done before and I've shown you this on my gig diaries. Now this was at the Brighton Open Air Theatre, which is in Brighton on the south coast of England. Now we've done this show before, this time it was a sold out show. Last time we did it, the heavens opened and the audience got absolutely soaked. Luckily we had some gazebos over our gear so we didn't get electrocuted. This time it remains dry, however it was absolutely freezing and by the end of the gig I could barely move my hands. So so this is a little snippet from the very first song before my hands froze into blocks of ice and couldn't move anymore. Warning, I am wearing a cowboy hat on this video as well. I did abandon it towards the end of the gig, which was probably a bad idea as it was getting so cold it would have kept my head warm. And for those of you who are interested, I'm using the same pedal board that I've shown in several videos through my car ramp, but in this occasion I'm using my Tyler Mongoose. So check this out, this is the solo from That's Alright Mama. <laughs> This next gig is from a function band called Mixed Feelings, a band that I've just recently joined. This was a big gig, it was an 11-piece band, we had five singers and two brass section, and the guy who used to run the band, he filmed a little bit, um, and he sent me the video, so uh, rather than it being a video from the mic stand, here's a little bit of footage from the audience's point of view. There's a couple of solos here, one is Jeff Beck's Hi-Ho Silver Lining and Sweet Home Alabama. Now on this one I'm using my same guitar and I'm using it through my normal pedal board but I'm playing through a Fender Hot Rod Blues Deluxe. Shining, Ooh, it's the right here we go. Now this next gig is a solo pub gig and I decided to do something a little bit different. Many years ago I created myself some backing tracks, I recorded them myself at home on a little Boss hard disk recorder programming the drums on a 
tiny little LCD screen. Things have moved on since then. And I also decided that I didn't like using backing tracks, so I stopped using them a long time ago. What I used to do was the first set I'd play acoustic guitar, much as I do now with a looper pedal, and the second set I would then play my electric guitar with backing tracks. Back in those days though, it wasn't as simple as just playing the electric guitar. I used to take my 4x10 Blues de Ville amp, I used to take my electric pedal board as well as my electric guitar. I also had a flight cased mini disc recorder which was a great big unit I had to take. So that on top of my acoustic setup and the PA, it became a bit of a pain and eventually, for various reasons, I abandoned the electric guitar set. However, it dawned on me the other day that if I wanted to do an electric guitar set these days, because of the improvement in technology, because I'm already carrying my Quad Cortex and playing my acoustic guitar through it. My guitar sound is sorted so I don't need the amp and I don't need the pedal board and on top of that I can just put the backing tracks onto my phone. In those days when I used to have the backing tracks your phone didn't do that. In fact I don't think my phone could even send text messages at that point so things have moved on and it's enabled me to do it and this is the first time I've used my Quad Cortex through a proper pair of speakers without using in-ear monitors and I have to say I thoroughly enjoyed the sound. I thought it sounded fantastic almost to the point where I think I could do a gig using my PA as my guitar amp and the Quad Cortex as the front end. I haven't done that yet, but I may come to it. Anyway, check out this video. But before that, I also found a bit of footage from 2003, me playing with those backing tracks, with the amp, with the original setup. And I think I'm playing exactly the same song as I'm playing in the later clip. So there's nearly 20 years between these two clips. So see what you think, see if I've improved. I think I play a few less notes now than I used to then, which is interesting. You'll also notice that all my guitar gear has changed. I was using an American Standard strapped back then through a Blues DeVille. I've still got the guitar but I don't use it all that often. Um, but the thing that hasn't changed is I'm still using exactly the same PA. Now that PA cost me a lot of money 20 odd years ago but it's paid dividends as I've never had to replace it and it still works and still sounds better than most PA systems that I've used since. So there we go, you buy cheap, you buy twice. In this case I'd probably be on my third PA if I'd bought a cheap one. Anyway, check out these clips. So the first one is from 2003, the second one from a couple of weeks ago, playing the same old song on the same type of guitar. Anyway, check it out. Another difference, 20 years ago, I didn't have my very own road crew. Let me just show you this. They volunteered, by the way. I didn't ask them to do it. Help. Are you my new roadie? No, help, help, please, 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 please. Okay. 
So on to the next gig. This was a showcase gig for a wedding band. We do a set in a uh, venue in Brighton and invite prospective clients along. And because it's not a big crowded venue, I was able to set up two cameras. So I'm just going to show you this because I thought it came out quite well. And it demonstrates that the GoPro is quite good at picking up the sound. So all the sound you hear is recorded off the built-in mic on the GoPro. Here we go. <laughs> Now another function band gig, this is a function band called Alibi who have been playing with a long time. You may recognise Ralph the drummer in the corner, he plays in my original band. And Chris the keyboard player who's out of shot here is in the later bit of footage at the club gig that I'm going to show you. So there's two clips here, I'm playing my 335 as you'll notice, I had to switch over to my Strat afterwards because if you'll notice in the second clip I did a rather dramatic string change and I put in my not totally slick but not too bad guitar change where I carry on singing backing vocals this is what you have to do if you don't have your own guitar tech anyway check this one out <laughs> This next one is an acoustic guitar gig. I'm playing with Christabel. You've seen footage of me playing with her before if you've seen my gig diaries. Now the bit I'm going to show you here, as I showed you some footage last time, was me getting smacked in the face by the microphone. Now this does happen from time to time. On this particular occasion there was a girl, she's walking along, staring at her phone, not looking where she was going. She walked straight into my microphone stand and smacked me on the head with it. Luckily it didn't smash me in the mouth, which quite often happens. In fact I've seen a trumpeter lose his teeth by that happening. So I was fortunate that it just smacked me on the forehead, but it was still very annoying. Um, she wasn't looking where she was going. Anyway, I think I'll show that clip because it's quite funny. <laughs> This next gig is a bar gig. I've shown this one before in my gig diaries. It stopped throughout lockdown. It's only just started again. Now on this occasion, the singer didn't turn up, even though we knew he was coming. He'd sent us messages earlier in the day. Um, and when he got there, we discovered that what had happened was he'd left his phone in his friend's car and the clock in his kitchen was an hour slow. So by the time he realized what the time was, it was 
the gig had already started. Luckily, he didn't live too far away, and he got there. So I had to cover the first three songs singing. So I thought I'd show this clip. This is the song where he arrives. I'll show the end of me singing, then the guitar solo. Then you can see the look of relief on my face when he's arrived. So here we go. <laughs> And here's another microphone stand incident. This gig, I've shown this venue many times before, it's called The Farm and it's in Eastbourne. On this occasion, my microphone got knocked and the camera got flown across the room. Luckily, no damage was done. And I think you'll agree, I made a rather miraculous recovery to carry the song on. Thank you, I'll carry on in a second. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. sorry about that. Don't worry, sorry. That's, that's his birthday, yeah. Happy oh. birthday, kid. That's all right. It's your birthday, man. <laughs> sorry, buddy. <laughs> We're nearly there. Now this is a club gig. This is basically the same band as Alibi, a couple of clips back, but without an extra singer. So it's myself, Chris on keyboards, who you can see in this video, and Ralph again. There's a couple of clips here. The first one being free folded. Now, I don't like to name drop. I mean, I was told it's not very cool by Mick Jagger, so I don't tend to do it. But on this video, I've got to tell you this, that we started playing free folded, and then it suddenly dawned on me. Now I did know this before we started, but it just dawned on me halfway through the first verse that Jeff Lynne's current bass player was sat right in front of me, right under the camera that you're watching the next clip from. So, a bit daunting. Well, it wasn't really, because he's a very nice chap. Anyway, so here we are. Here's Free Falling and then a bit of um, Romeo and Juliet by Dire Straits with my impromptu conductor. <laughs> Thank you. 
finally, coming full circle, here's another suspiciously Elvis gig. This was from a fundraising gig at a big hotel. And I have to say, Ivor, who plays Elvis on this gig, was absolutely hilarious. I was crying with laughter. And this is just the outro from the gig. I put this clip in because I was using my new Vertex FX Steel String Singer pedal. And this is the first time I've used the progressive gain. I clicked in the EQ to start the solo to give myself a bit of boost and a bit of more treble. And then I kicked in the gain section towards the end of this solo. So you might better hear the difference there, but it's a very nice sounding pedal that I've uh, now got permanently on my board as you will have seen in my last gig diary if you've seen it. So thank you very much for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment, and please check out my new song, which is out today. I'll put the link to it in the description. So please check that out and I'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.